Hey, it's Mike the Scrapping Guy here once again, and I have another video tutorial for you. Uh, I might sound a little nasally, it's because I have a little bit of a cold here, but I'm not going to let that stop me from creating a video that you guys can use in your digital scrapbooking. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can take an ordinary piece of clip art and turn it into kind of a unique uh, embellishment that you can use for your digital scrapbooking layouts. And what I have here is just a normal clip art of an owl sitting on a book. Uh, nothing real fancy about it, it's kind of cute kind of might be good for a back to school or some kind of school type of layout uh, but I want, what I want to do is make it a little more unique with some textures so what I have is a couple of other things that I did let me go ahead and open those up right here what I did I have a, uh, a scanner you know that's part of my printer and I take, took an ordinary piece of uh, felt and I just scanned in that felt and kind of squared it off so it looks okay and so we have that is going to be one of my textures and another thing that I scanned in was an old tile that I had uh, laying in there. So uh, with your digital scanner, you can easily just go ahead and scan various textured items, such as tiles and felt and silk and those other kind of things. And you can use them with your layouts when you're designing embellishments and, and stuff like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I do have my picture of an owl here. And what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of the background part of it because I only want to work with the actual clip art image itself. So to do that I have my magic wand tool selected and I'm just going to go ahead over and I'm going to click the outside white part, hit the delete key, I'm going to click over this little piece, get rid of that one, click over here and this little bottom corner, click there. And then I'm going to hit control D, deselect everything. And now you can see that everything behind the aisle and the book is transparent by looking at these little checkered boxes here. So now we have just the aisle selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to open back up the uh, element that is the felt. And I'm going to go to my move tool. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to lay it on top of the aisle. So the layer that's on top of the aisle is the felt. But obviously it's taking up the whole piece so we don't want to do that. And what I can easily do is if I go down to my layer, the thumbnail, if I hold the control key down on my keyboard and left mouse click, what it'll do is it's going to select anything that is um, not transparent, which is one of the reasons why we also got rid of the background of the owl, so that only the owl is the thing that is on the this particular layer. Now if you look at my image, you can see there's these little marching ants, which is the outline of just the owl. So what I can do is make sure my top layer is selected with a felt. I'm going to go up to select and choose inverse. And what that's going to do is instead of having everything um, that was the owl selected, it's going to select everything outside of the of the owl, but it's on this particular layer. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the delete key. So now, once again, we have our felt layer, which is the exact size and the exact outline of the owl with the transparent background behind it also. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D to deselect everything. And what I need to do is, because this felt is a blue color, I want to make it a normal, like a gray color, because I really don't want the color uh, of the texture coming through. So in order to do that, once again, make sure that layer is still selected. I'm going to go up to Enhance, Adjust Colors, and Remove Color. And what that does is it turns it into a normal gray scale uh, color, or I should say absence of color because it's now gray. So now what we can do is come over and this is where it kind of gets pretty cool. So we're going to go up here in the layers palette there is a drop down menu that says uh, set the blending mode for this layer. So if I click on that it actually comes up with a few different options and what you can do is depending on the texture that you're working with and the image that you're working with you can go ahead and uh, select a few of these things just to kind of check them out and see how they look. For instance, if I hit Dissolve, well, actually nothing happens with that one. Let me go down and hit Darken, and now you can see that we have a little bit of the uh, the gray felt coming through, and it's also included as part of the image, but where everything is white, you can really see that texture coming through. And that's not really, really the effect that I'm looking for right now. So let me go ahead and see what a couple other ones look like. There's Multiply, it does the same kind of thing, it kind of makes it a little bit darker, and what we can even do is, if you like this uh, this look, what we can do is go up to Enhance, Adjust Lighting and Levels, and making sure that that layer is still selected, 
we could take the right slider, push it over to the left, and you can see that it's actually brightening the photograph, I'm sorry, or the image, to make that texture pop out a little bit more. And that might actually be exactly what you're looking for. It kind of has that uh, textured uh, kind of look, look to it. And if we de check the little eyeball just to compare with it and without it, there's the normal clip art. Click that little layer, and there we go. Now we added the texture to the book and the actual element. So it kind of looks like you can go out and feel, and it would be a little bit rough. So let me go, I'm going to hit delete to get rid of that lighting, just to take a look at a few more blending options we have. Here's one called Keller Burn. Now you can see that really gives us a unique effect. It kind of darkens everything, makes it kind of uh, red uh, anywhere that isn't white. In the white it looks like it's normal. So let's go to Linear Burn. Kind of does the same thing, but actually uh, it does include the white as part of the blending, the blending mode. Here's a darker color, and now it looks like it's uh, just keeping the white as that texture, but it's also darkening the outside. So like I said, you could go and you can kind of mess with all of these different blending modes just to see if it comes up with an effect that you're looking for. There's Color Dodge. You can see it really brightens up everything automatically there for us while leaving the texture behind it. So there we go. Like I said, you can kind of mess around just to kind of get an idea of what you're looking for. Here's overlay. That actually looks pretty good. And what it does is it kind of adds the texture to the outside, but leaves the white around the eyes and in the center here in the book as normal. But it does give a little bit, almost like a cardboard type look uh, to it here for the overlay. So there we go. Like I said, you can easily change the, um, the look of an item. Okay, here's like a little crackly with the hard light. Uh, that might be actually not necessarily good on this clip art, but maybe on like a, if you have a picture frame or something and you want to kind of give it that distressed look, you can go ahead and add that as a blending option. Um, but let's go back up to, let me see if I can remember which one it was. I don't think it was Linear Burn. Uh, let's see. There it was, Multiply. And let me go back to Enhance, Adjust Lighting Levels. And actually, this is kind of the one that I that I like. Hit OK. And then what I would do is if I like this, I would just go ahead and I would take both of these layers. So let me take the one. If I hold the Shift key down, click on the second one, and now you can see that they're both selected. Then I would right-click, hit Merge Layers. And now we have, we have one element that we can save as a PNG file, and it would uh, keep our transparent background in there. So if we imported that into one of our uh, digital layouts, then it would um, only be the aisle and the book, which is kind of cool. So let me go ahead. I'm going to Control-Z my way out of that to go back to our normal look. OK, hit that a bunch of times. And I'm even going to control Z my way out of there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this other um, texture that I have, which is the tile. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it over top, just like I did with the other one. Now this one's at a little higher resolution, so I need to shrink it down a little bit. So I'm going to do is drag it, take the corner, and pull it down. A little bit more here. Uh, just one more time I think we should do it there we go so we have our texture laying on top of the owl once again and I'm gonna go ahead and hit a little check mark to leave it there go over to the layer of the owl hold the control key down click on the thumbnail and you can see well it might be kinda of hard to see we have the marching ants going around again you go go up to hit select inverse hit delete and then control D to deselect it. So once again we have the outline of just the uh, owl for our texture. And let's go ahead. This is actually kind of a, of a white color already so I really don't have to worry about removing the color. But uh, what I'm going to do is let's take a look at a couple of different ones with this also. And actually this is kind of cool. Uh, if you click, click, uh, click the darken mode or blending mode, what it does is it actually has the eyes and the fuzzy um, belly here and the book as just a texture coming through and the rest of it is the uh, regular clip art. So what we can do for kind of a neat effect is leave this uh, fuzzy here 
maybe not necessarily the eyes or the book, but at least the chest part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my eraser tool, and with the uh, with the mode selected as the uh, this layer selected, I'm sorry, I'm going to go and I'm going to erase where the book is. So we're actually erasing out the texture behind the book, and I'm going to do the same thing for the eyes. Just go ahead and erase out of there. And then if, if I look in the bottom here, it looks like a little shaded area uh, where it's coming around the belly of the owl. What I'm going to do is I kind of want that all to be fuzzy through there. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on the layer with the owl. And let me make my eraser tool a little bit smaller. And actually, you know what? Instead of erasing it, let me see if this works. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit my magic wand tool. Click on it. There we go. It actually selects that. Hit delete and control D. So now we actually have an owl that has kind of a fuzzy belly, uh, belly here, and it looks actually kind of cool. So uh, if I want the fuzzy belly, it's going to be kind of hard to say uh, a lot of times, what I can do is add some more texture to the rest of it. If I go ahead and let me double click the felt again, drag that on top, and let's see, let me go ahead and click on the owl, control click on the owl. Make sure the felt selected. Go up to select inverse again and hit delete. And now we can go ahead and see what happens if we start messing with this uh, texture. That's not a good one there. Overlay. Oh, actually, what I forgot to do, the reason this has kind of a blue tint to it is I forgot to change it back to black and white, which I can do easily uh, with that selected. We go to enhance, adjust color remove color there we go so now that that's gray and so now we actually have the blending of two different textures one was the uh, the towel and the other one was the felt and we now have the book in the outside of the owl looking kind of like a, a texture of either felt or or to me it kind of looks a little bit like cardboard but we also have the kind of fuzziness of the towel on the belly of the owl so it really gives us a unique looking digital scrapbooking element that we can use with our layouts. Uh, in order to do that, we'd go ahead and once again, hold the shift key down, make sure all the layers are selected, right click, merge layers. Uh, we, and with our transparent background, we can go ahead and save that as a PNG file. In fact, let me go ahead and do that now. Save as. I'm gonna go down, hit PNG. Where is it there? There we go. And we'll call that owl, owl and book. And hit save. We hit none as the interlace. And there we go. We can now use this element as a um, embellishment in our digital scrapbooking layouts. And like I said, it just was a, a started out as a normal piece of clip art. And now we added some uniqueness with it, with the texture and the kind of fuzziness here, that all I did was use my scanner that I scanned in. So if you're looking around your house and you see some kind of either paper or some kind of a uh, piece of material or something, uh, don't be afraid to scan it in and use it as a texture on some of your designs. So there we go. Uh, hopefully that's uh, uh, easy to understand and have some fun scrapbooking.